What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. Happy Friday. Hope everyone's having a good one. Man, uh, for those of you, I appreciate those of you in, 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 in Discord and stuff uh, rooting for me last night and, and the kind words from some people on Twitter because that was a that was a pretty brutal third place finish. And, uh, I'll you know, I'll get into why real quick. I'm going to share my screen and talk a little bit about it. And Sheets has got a few things he's going to say. And then we'll get into tonight's slate. But uh, yeah, the thing that was that was tilting about it was, first of all, the Miami overtime, if that doesn't happen, I win by a million. Um, everybody else around me, I mean, even the guy ahead of me, this, the BAM had, I think, 10 fantasy points in overtime in that game. Um, it, it was, it, you know, everybody, everybody's not even close. And I had have a chance to win the, the lottery as well. If I get anything from Simons and McCollum, Simons and McCollum combined for one fantasy point in the fourth quarter. Um, that was tilting enough. The game in Miami going into overtime was absolutely really tilting on a four game slate because it was locked up and won anyway. On top of it, my three guards who were actually what, what differentiated me, they go a combined 16 for 52 from the field. It, it, like literally, I just felt like I couldn't have won, run worse and ended up in third. What happened with the stack corrections was I was at 316 and these two guys, the, both of the Colts lineups were at 311 at, at, after the games were over. They made a quick stack correction for two and a half fantasy points and then another two and a half fantasy points going the other way. Um, so I, and I was at 316 and they were both at 311. I've never seen a five. I've never had a five point switch. I've had some bad, some bad ones. And sometimes you feel like at the time, like, God, you, you know, is it, it, it always seems to happen for these, for the Osimo guys or the, or the DeColts and, you know, the guys who play a million lineups and everything. They always, I, I just feel like I'm always on the wrong end of these stack corrections. I'm just, I want it to be my way someday. So I thought I was going to win 50 K. I ended up winning 10 K still good to be back on track. Really, really disappointing. Of course, I just played one entry here, but it's just really tilting when with what could have been. Um, I really liked the build I came up with. I didn't think anybody else was going to go with that same build, and they didn't. And uh, I talked a lot about, you know, how I love Dinwiddie and Kuzma. As that's where you start off with for that game. And obviously the Barton and Hachimura came through well. The Gafford I like better off the bench. He went from a guy who was probably going to be 80% owned to only 17. Um, so I, I really liked the build I made. And I was really, really, uh, really upset that it didn't come in because it, it looked like it was basically a lock to win with with a, with you know two minutes left in the games basically and or two two minutes left in the Miami game just needed no overtime so that's my little complaint for the day sheets yeah uh, so I want to I want to talk to everybody about about projections and about the NBA um, in in uh, in light of yesterday so I wasn't watching the games last night I was actually watching the, the rest of uh, White Lotus um, oh, cool. season one uh, I'm gonna catch up season two coming up I fully recommend it yeah me too and then afterwards I looked and I saw that. Um, that Dinwiddie and Kuzma had smashed, right? So after that, I'm like, okay, there's literally no way Bobby did, didn't win, right? I, I didn't look at any lineups or whatever it is. So I went downstairs and I originally, I pulled up, I tell you, I pulled up the 555 with fully expecting to see him in the top five somewhere. You know what I mean? And it was, and, and, and so not to, not to toot Bobby's horn or whatever it is, but one, one thing that I noticed about Bobby is that when he, See, a lot of people will come up with, with good plays, and most of the time that, that their good plays come in, they kind of screw up elsewhere. Bobby has a really, really good percentage of, of actually hitting it when his when his when his when his main takes come in. And part of it is because most of the time, because these main takes, they're they're not they're not the most popular takes on, on the board, right? So when you get like two your two top top plays that actually smash and they're gonna be low owned, you know, you don't you you just have to play normal like the rest of the way. And, and and it worked out. So the other thing I want to talk about, um, uh, not necessarily to his own horn, but only because we went through it, it's really important, really important to watch the, the all of our videos and watch the processes. Because when we, we talked about this in the uh, in the live stream, we talked about projections and we talked about Kuzma and we talked about Dinwiddie with respect to other guys, like with respect to Melton, with respect mm -hmm. to whoever. Mm -hmm. And you know, we went through it and Bobby came right out and said, I, I just don't get the projections. They're just wrong. You know, like Kuzma is just a better play than this. And, and, and the thing is about Dinwiddie and Melton, they project is pr pretty much the same. So what we did was we actually drilled it down a little bit. I said, okay, so let's just, let's just see. What about these minutes? The projections are based on these minutes. Do you agree with that? He's like, yeah, pretty much. I'm like, well, they're projecting. So you're project. you just think that Dinwiddie is going to be much higher you know, usage then melted. He's like, yeah, I don't even think that's close. And that's, so what my point was is that we got from the projections and we got to takes that, that were really, really strong. And it's not like, you know what I mean? They're not, they weren't completely ridiculous plays, 
But there were plays that were just ignored because people just bl blindly in the wrong way. But they over relied on, on on the median projection and forgot that, 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 you know, other stuff like some of these usage numbers, some of these usage estimates were ridiculous. And one of the things we talked about first at noon yesterday, and this was what I said right from the beginning, was that that Dinwiddie was getting all kinds of just free reign to run the non-Luca minutes, yeah. right? Yeah. And, 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 and that, I think, is just kind of understated by by a lot of these models, you know, like like what your usage looks like when you're with the second unit, as opposed to what it looks like when you're with the first unit. So, and you had, and Dinwiddie had a great combination of not only being, being you know, whether he was gonna get 38 minutes, whatever, but the point is, is that he, he rated to get mass minutes, including the minutes that you want, you know? Right. So, 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 uh, so good, good, good for Bobby to kind of put it all together. And listen, you know, got unlucky, you know, at the overtime. If you want to get get really, really nasty. Is it's you, you? You could say you got unlucky that 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 hero was out. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, none of those guys you weren't playing them anyway. You right. know what I mean? And none of the, and none of these guys that you didn't play any of them, and none of them were even in play. You right. know, otherwise, and, I, and what did one of those guys get you? One of those Butler guys? I, oh I yeah, remember. it was Butler. It was Butler, okay. and uh, it was the whole the whole the whole stack of that thing. Well, the, the Butler, oh, came, right. uh, Martin, yeah. and Vincent. Um, and even mentioned it took him took him hundred minutes to get there, but he got there. yeah a million minutes to get in there. And and I just want to address what one thing you said about Dinwiddie's minutes. He was projected at thirty one minutes, and I told I was pointing out that that makes zero sense because if the in any game that's been close, right. other than the 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 one Brooklyn game which he had foul trouble in the first half, but especially without Christian Wood with the games he had, he's played thirty eight minutes in all of them, and and that included last night he played thirty eight minutes again. So his projection at thirty one minutes just didn't make any sense to me. Um, so that was that was the logical part there. And then I said I need and I knew I need you need a low owned guy. I liked McCollum. I liked the little narrative. And 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 he 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 tried his best. He he shot six of 17, one for seven from three, but he had the ball in his hands. He had seven rebounds, seven assists. It looked like he was gonna have a triple double there for a while. He had 25 in the first quarter. Um, and I just thought I was gonna run away with it. But you know, it's one of those, and, and, and it wouldn't have been just as fifty thousand. It would could have been a hundred thousand as well. We had we had a we had a really live sweat for that for that to be a possibility. And it just didn't quite get there. So I'm just going to chalk it up. At least it wasn't for six figures in this particular tournament um, and uh, move on to today. And hopefully we get the six figures today. Sounds good to me. All right, let's pull up yours and then we'll go game by game here because this is, looks like a really good slate uh, at first. And as we know, there will be a lot of things that are going to bring a ton of chalk in later. I don't think a lot of the stuff we're going to project for chalk early in the day. Do me a favor and just re-enable re screen sharing for oh, me. Sorry about that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. But yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice big slate here, but uh, you know, I think there's, I think there's a lot of ways to go and uh, I'll, I'll of course be firing. I, you know, I tend to play and do my winning in spurts. So I'm, I'm going to try and capitalize on that and hopefully be back at it tonight. Um, you've got a ton of guys out. You've got the Giannis, the Giannis being out again, the prices have been hiked up, but it, I, I don't think it should scare us away much. A lot of things to go over, but I think that we'll start game by game and that would be Denver Boston as the first one. No Brogdon tonight is going to make both Derek White and Peyton Pritchard look like good plays. And I, I would be on the side of, of Derek White more than I would be Pritchard. Um, I, I don't, I, I think, I think playing Pritchard is okay. Um, he's showing up as one of the best values on the slate, actually showing up for Saber Sim as the best value on the slate. And I think it's okay, but I think it's a little speculative to assume that he's going to get all of the minutes that Brogdon would have gotten and that he'll necessarily be productive in those minutes because they have other usage guys on this team. I also think it's a boost to Marcus Smart. So I would say White or Smart are my priorities with a possibility of maybe using Pritchard that I probably am going to cross out because we'll probably get better value by the end of the day. And otherwise in this game, I don't really have a lot of love for, for much of anything, to be honest with you. Um, Grant Williams, you could make an argument. It uh, should be in the, you know, in the, I guess he could be in the mix, but probably not going to make it for me. And uh, I, I love the Jamal Murray idea. By the way, Jamal Murray was on the six figure. It was on the biggest lineup the other night. He was on the winning lineup at 2% ownership or whatever. He put up 39. Was he really? Yep. But he didn't have him. He didn't even have a monster game. He just had 39 fantasy points. I don't like this matchup for him, but he's a guy who can kind of go off even in tough matchups. So uh, Jamal Murray is probably the the guy I'm most interested in. And you can always take a shot with Michael Porter Jr. But this is not a game I'm I, that's that's really, really high for me outside of the white or smart thing. How about you? Yeah, I'm not, I'm really getting to this yet. I'm not really getting to too much uh, um, Peyton Pritchard. 
Um, nor, nor am I really getting to too much Derek White as of yet. Uh, I guess these could update. Um, yeah, I probably have a couple of couple of things a little off right now. But yeah, I, I'm not. I, maybe I didn't inject him with Brogdon out. Let me just. I'm gonna check that for a second. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll you'll know, listen. I'll, I'll be updated later. But I, I'm sure if, if Brogdon's out, then I think those guys are in play. I, I prefer Derek White to Pritchard if that matters. Um, but I, I don't either have either of them quite yet um other boston's i mean tatum at 10-1 is you know it's fine i don't i i don't, I don't really mind that um what's going on De denver i'm not i'm not really getting such a great projection out of Jokic. um yeah, 7 on draft because i think on FanDuel it makes a little more sense but we just it's it, i mean the other guys being available has taken away a little bit of his monster ceiling he doesn't have 20 assists every game like he was last year his right. rebound numbers are down a little bit not still still really good um but i think 10 7 makes a lot more sense than 11 7 for him on DraftKings. yeah i'm not really getting any any yoke so for me I, i'll just you know give another look to this uh i'll give another look to bought the boston guys later but um Currently, I don't know. I don't know if I don't. I don't know if I want to play Peyton Pritchard, for for example. Yeah, it doesn't feel great. And 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 as always, it's, I feel the same way on almost every slate with Tatum and Brown. I think they're both extremely interesting. Like they're they're both. They, there's definitely they. Tatum can put up the sixty pluses. Brown can put up the fifty pluses. I think I would side a little bit with Brown just because the price. If I had to pick one, but um, I, they're not my favorite spend ups today. It is a pretty good pace game. I mean, you got you got you got you got Boston in a two thirty total. It's, I could see there, there's a chance that that you could see Tatum or Brown going going a little nutso today. Anyway, all right, let's move on um, to Phoenix, Orlando, and Sheets. Why don't you start this one off? Because I'm just grabbing my sheets real quick. Um. Okay. Phoenix, Orlando. I really don't have too much except for, of course, DeAndre Ayton. Right, he always always the best player. Always, season. always a lock. It never never doesn't. Um, he got put up eighteen fantasy points the other night without Chris. Wow, Paul. that's pretty good. That's like more than normal. All right, so <laughs> getting there. Um, but he does, you know, rate to be a uh, best best uh, point per dollar center play on the slate that that I'm not playing. Um, uh, I have a much better center play than this. Um, anyway, I don't really have too much in this game. No Orlando. No no Phoenix. No no nothing. Yeah, it's, I mean, if Chris Paul's out, uh, same thing. It's, I don't care about the prices, uh, the price hikes. Uh, play Devin Booker and play Cameron Payne. I'm assuming Chris Paul plays tonight. So I actually think that if there was a matchup for Aiton that I that I would like, this would be a good one. I just, I, I can't get over it. I, I can't get over the the misprojection all the time. <laughs> um, right. He's 6,200. He's on my list right now. I'm not crossing him out, but I, I'm certainly not prioritizing him. And then the pricing gets weird on on Orlando, I guess maybe if Paolo was out again, you could take a chance there uh, with one of these other guys, but even that doesn't feel all that great. So I'm probably off this one as well. God, it's nice to, on a big slate to, to sort of get two games out of the way where you don't really have a lot to love. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm seeing a lot out of just a couple of games. Oh, you got, wait, you've got to be freaking kidding. Me. What? All right. So we're on to the next, next Detroit. Yep. This is a joke, right? What's that? Kate, Kate price. No, I, I have the fourth highest point per dollar play on the slate is is the once and future aforementioned Cam Reddish. Is that a joke? I mean, no. like it's like the, it's like the anti. It's it's like it's like it's like ridiculous. You know, if, is he going to get there as chalk? Is that really going to? Is that really possible? He's put up uh, a combined. Like literally, a combined ten and a half fantasy yeah. points last two get starts. But when I when I played him, when, you know what I mean, and and he's he really going to go off chalk and get there. You know, it's gonna it's gonna be without me. I I, I will say that. Um, boy, oh boy, that's that's <laughs> annoying. Um, <laughs> that is annoying. He just he does nothing on the court. <laughs> that's true. He doesn't. So Watch, I, I, I it's hot. <laughs> so I will say. From the Knicks, Julius Randle, maybe Jalen Brunson, maybe, and from Detroit, like you said, I mean Kate Kate Cunningham. None of those look to be that great, so I probably want to play two of them. I probably play Cade with with Randle or something like that. I guess that makes some sense. Or Cade with with Jalen Brunson, um, and uh, Cam Reddish is really going to get forty, isn't he? Uh, you know what? If, if, if he does, so it's going to be very it's gonna tilting. Be tilting. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so this is a weird, a weird game. The Knicks, have, it's always weird to try to figure out what they're doing. Uh, Obi plays really well, then doesn't get to play as many minutes. Uh, Jericho Sims is starting for some reason, and I think Jericho Sims is actually in play. He played 26 minutes in the last game. He had 22 fantasy points. It's a good matchup to attack Detroit Bigs in general. The rebound numbers tend to go up for the opposing side, and uh, Detroit tends to miss a lot of shots as well. So Jericho Sims I would have ahead of Reddish personally, but I don't love either of them. No. I think you're playing one of Cade Cunningham and I think we have to treat the Cunningham Ivy thing. Like you have to almost have to play one of them every night. Oh, you think so? okay. Jaden Ivy. I just want to point out, just look at his, his game log. <laughs> okay. This guy is going absolutely nuts. He's put up 45 in his last game. He put up 49, the game before that 30, the game before that had a down game with 18 and 31, the game before that. He's it, it, it's cutting into Cunningham. Cunningham had the worst game maybe of his professional career the last time out when they got smoked by Boston. I love this price for Cunningham, but my, my, the way I'm treating it right now is one of these two guys are going in my lineups almost every time they play because one of them goes nuts and it's really hard to predict which one, but Jaden Ivy has been unbelievable. And uh, I love the talent on this guy. He's, he's, he, he, he looks like a, you know, he looks like a young Westbrook uh, the way, the way he plays. And uh, right now, neither of them showing up particularly high ownership. I, Cunningham yeah. will get the, the bulk of it. But Jaden Ivey has a ceiling, and uh, I can definitely yeah. get after this. Um, I also like the idea that it's Jaden Ivey's first time in New York. That could go. Ooh, I like that. Um, and this like guy, that. you know, has every reason to call himself. You know, he, he's every bit as good as these other guys, and he rebounds the hell out of the ball. He plays with just an incredible amount of energy. So I, I really like him. He can get there multiple ways. Um, one of those two guys are, are, are going to be a priority for me. And actually my way of, if I'm playing three lineups, the two, they'll build up, they'll be in all three, just in separate, separate builds. Uh, I like the idea of the, I think, I think everyone on the Knicks is just fine for me. Uh, the regular guys, Randall Barrett, I just want to remind myself that it's a good matchup. So Randall Barrett and Brunson are, uh, are all completely in play, but I don't feel excited about any of them. I think Randall's the best play out of the three. Um, but I certainly would have no arguments against RJ Barrett at home, actually. It, I, it's something that he had, he had really good numbers at home last year. Um, so I would, I would, I, you know, Randall or Barrett are probably the way I would lean personally, but not, not very excited. Well, 3,100 Cam Reddish doesn't, it doesn't suit your fancy. How about, how about I give you Thad Young at 3,100? Um, it's another one. Uh, I just don't want to do it. I mean, it's it, it, he's showing up at six X early projection. I just hope he sits. You know, I just, you know what I mean? I just don't want to even, I don't even want to deal with it. He's got, he's got a 19 minute projection. You know what I mean? Like, we'll see. I hope, I hope I don't have to play any of this stuff. I hope I could just kind of, you know, stack the other games I like and then just be done with it. But right now, uh, Thad Young 3,100 looks to be a good, good point per dollar play. Um, as as you mentioned before, I'm not playing Gary Trent. Um, what else in this game? OKC you have Shea 9200 again. That's just too cheap. Um, yep. And I guess that's pretty much all I have. And and not, not I mean it's a tough matchup, but I don't understand. Like you know, I we go through this every every time, and I just I'm going to keep saying the same thing. And I know it was two overtimes the other day. He still had 50. In, in regulation, I believe. Oh, no, he didn't. He, he ended up getting there a little bit late the, the last time. But uh, Shea just feels like he's, you, you always th should think about him. And, 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 I, and I think you're doing two things here. I, th I think one of the Toronto bigs, if you don't, if you don't like the, the Thad Young, Otto Porter is, is certainly reasonable at 3,600. I think we'll get better value. But, you know, he put up 23 the other night. Um, well, what Porter. happened with that? That was that Porter play. How many minutes did he get? Oh, he 23. 23. Yeah. Okay. But but now they're down an extra body. Um, yeah. it, they don't have a, a Precious in the lineup tonight. So Coloco, Boucher, Porter, and Thad Young are all on my early list. One of those four I'll probably end up playing. Right now, if I had to pick one, it would be Boucher. And I'll tell you who always gets there without Siakam, and that's Van Vliet. I yeah. think Van Vliet is an awesome play. And uh, I think that you can you can run it, you know, so I, I I think you're playing one of these Toronto four, whether it's Van Vliet, Trent, OG, or Scotty Barnes. For me, I have it rated Van Vliet, uh, OG, Scotty Barnes, and then Trent. But I think this is a really good, a really uh, you know, a game that I want to get pieces of. Just and, and then I like Shea on the other on the other side. I also think it's worth noting that 
Josh Giddy finally had a game. Uh, no, it was a double overtime game, but he had 46 fantasy points the other day and he had 15 rebounds in that game. He's, he's a guy who can do a lot of things. Hasn't been as active this year. So I, I'll put the uh, SGA or Giddy as another one of my, uh, my things here. I do like this. And I just, you just got to hope that OKC keeps it close, which I think they, they very well could. Um, so, so this is a game I probably end up with quite a bit of pieces of, uh, but SGA or Giddy, that's the way I'm treating it right now. And I give SGA the boost, uh, especially considering that Giddy is going to be high owned and, and he won't, and you won't have much ownership on uh, Shea, which I just don't understand why. <laughs> uh, I do think there's a, there's, there's one other play I just want to mention. Poku is, is looking better and better. He put up 43 the other night. I know it was again, the double overtime, but he put up 38, a couple games before that. It's, it's more of a flyer play. I don't want to play him if he's above 10% owned, but I think he's an interesting play that you can at least consider. So this game actually has a, has quite a bit of appeal to me. So, uh, all right, moving on. What do you got next? It's, uh, so, so the Milwaukee situation remains the same, um, with no, uh, with no uh, Drew and no, no Giannis. The prices have come up a little bit, but uh, the challenge remains. I mean, you have you have to play these guys. Um, um, you know, you could play the Milwaukee Roulette. You know, you, who who's, who's going to project Bo Champ to get thirty minutes um, in the last game? But you have game like throwaway games like this. You know, everything's up for grabs. You know what I mean? Like like anybody who's playing well is gonna is gonna is gonna stay in there. Um, it's not like anybody's fighting for a starting spot. You know, they're just going to try to win the game and whoever's playing well is going to accommodate that. Mm-hmm. I, I would definitely go back to Portis despite his him busting this last game. Yep. Um, uh, Lopez was really low owned. And look, looking back, I was wondering, I can't, I, I, it's kind of annoying why and I, why I didn't play him. You know what I mean? Like so hung up on all this other Milwaukee stuff. I forgot, you know, I forgot to play him, I think. Um, and then uh, Grayson Allen again, Javon Carter again. Uh, those five guys, I guess, I have Carter, Allen, Portis, Lopez. I threw in Beauchamp. I mean, I mean, why not? I mean, if you show they'll play him, maybe they'll play him again. And yeah. you know what? If you want another, you want to spin the spin the roulette wheel. Maybe this is the one Norton uh, Nora plays, you know, better and plays more minutes. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you got you definitely have to play a bunch of these guys. I think, um, or at least a couple. Yeah. And uh, I don't know exactly which ones to play. And I'm not really seeing much on the San Antonio side, actually. Yeah, so I, so so I have my priority is written in two Milwaukee's. Now I think that's for me that starts with Carter. Um, he is the actual starter, and he put up um, he had a monster game the other night. Also shot the ball really well. I'm not expecting him to put up 62 fantasy points again, but uh, 5300 doesn't necessarily feel like a, a big enough jump. And I think my next favorite is actually Portis. Uh, and then I don't care about a down game. I'm willing to overlook it. It's pretty incredible the 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 use of you know you don't usually see the, the Brooke Lopez taking 23 shots. I know he got the double overtime, but people sometimes forget that Brooke Lopez is actually a pretty good basketball player. He just, you know, he does, does the right things. So when everybody else is out, I think that he's in the mix as well. So I, I have it ranked Carter Portis, Lopez Allen. And then I like the idea of getting some exposure to Nuora. Um, That's the way I'm going to, I'm going to approach the Milwaukee side, but it, it's probably going to be two Milwaukee's for me early in the day, unless we hear about other stuff uh, c- coming up a little bit later. And then the San Antonio side, I'd like to come up with maybe a maybe a three man Milwaukee and then and find a run back. And That'd I think nice. you've, got, you've got some you've got some options. Um, I think Keldon Johnson, um, Trey Jones, Devin Vassell. The problem is it just get it feels condensed. It feels like there's a lot of guys who I feel like I just kind of like, and nobody that really stands out as being just a monster player or a guy who could really just go nuts. I think if there was one that that it would probably be Vassell or Keldon Johnson. But these prices are, are you know, not the most exciting plays at these prices. So I, I will probably try to force one one little game stack in here. But right now, I, I'm not showing up a lot for uh, San Antonio just on its own. All right. Um, you ready to talk about what's the what do you got next? I got uh, John Morant scoring 70 fantasy points. Now. Yeah, that feels like a good bet tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's what I got. Um, I mean, that's what he did the whole playoff series against these guys, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, aware, I'm really concerned, though, that uh, De- that uh, D'Angelo Russell got really tightening up his defense and he's ready to really <laughs> shut down John Morant, I think. Uh, um, yeah, that, 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 that's what I think. Um, and on the uh, Minnesota side, um. I guess again, you know, at the Edwards, you want to play them. Um, 
I guess Anthony Edwards would be, again, we say this every time, right? I think Anthony Edwards would be the one of those, all those guys to mm-hmm. play. Um, we got, we had a chance to get Cat under 9K before, but not anymore. Um, Edwards, 7,500. But I, I could, I could one off Durant. I'm not Durant, uh, Morant as well. I, I think that he's, um, I think that he is, well, there's another guy, but I, I think he's the, probably the best player. Yeah, I, I, I agree that Ja is, uh, is going to be a guy who I, I really want to get exposure to tonight. This is a, you know, this was a, a really competitive playoff series last year. And I think that, you know, Minnesota is, they're, they're supposed to be better. They haven't been better, but they're supposed to be better. And I think Cat is is the the more obvious play if you look at the game logs. And you're not going to get ownership, I don't think, on Edwards. I'm just double checking them right about that. He So there's been a lot of talk that, you know, from basically everyone who's associated with the NBA, why don't they just give this team to Edwards already? This is enough, enough of this stuff. Let him get his shots off. Let him handle the ball. Let him be the main focus of this team. Nothing else is working and he's your most talented player. So I I, I wonder if this is the game maybe where, where we really start to see that. Um, he also had a good series against these guys before. So did Cat, Cat by the way. Um, so I, I have Cat or Edwards as as the as playing one of those two as being a good idea to run on the other side of a of a jaw lineup. And of course, we probably will get some some stuff to open up later. I don't like playing Dylan Brooks, <laughs> um, and I, I I don't know. I, I, he looks like a projection play that that makes some sense. I just think I'll skip it personally. Um, it is a good game environment, so I like getting pieces of it, but I don't know. It doesn't feel, doesn't quite feel good enough to me. What I would say is that if there's a, a kind of a matchup and it's funny because you think Steven Adams, he's big, he's strong, it's tough. If there's a, you know, this, this could be one of the Gobert 18 rebound games just because he's down in the paint so much and he doesn't have to come out. And I could say Steven Adams on the other side is actually probably a really an interesting play here because kind of got played off the court in the series last year because of having to guard cat with Gobert there now. I think his minutes should be more solid and he's a guy who can, you know, he could six, seven X this price tag pretty reasonably. So I think this is a game you, you certainly want to look out for. It's a huge total three thirty four and a half. So I'm sorry, two thirty two thirty four and a half, 34 and a half, maybe three thirty four. We'll see. Um, but uh, as of right now, the only ones I have as priorities are jaw or then one of Edwards or towns, but uh, m- maybe later today, if anything else opens up, uh, I might get more involved in this game. All right. What do you got in Cleveland and, and Golden State here, Sheets? So I have, I have an opinion here. Um, first of all, from a uh, from a fantasy perspective, um, uh, Garland remains a good play, um, even though obviously he didn't have a very good game in his last one. Yeah. Um, and I do have an opinion on this game. So so and I, I I've just seen this I've just seen this before. You you, you have. You have kind of the team that's obviously just kind of a new team and just really kind of means business this year and it's like impressing, like in Cleveland, right? And then they got the one chance they go they're going into the Golden State team, the defending champs or whatever it is, and and and, and they're kind of like log gagging around a little bit, you know. And and what you get is this narrative that that this is the game where Golden State just kind of like gets their shit together and shows Cleveland they're not that great. I think Cleveland wins this game kind of easy. Um, I, I, I've just seen this a million times, you know, that, 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 that it's still golden state is still like in their thing. They're still whatever. And Cleveland is just freaking a team. You just don't want to mess with right now. And it's not like they play these guys a hundred times a year. You know what I mean? They barely probably have any film on this freaking Cleveland team. You know what I mean? And Cleveland's going to come in there. This is their, this is a, this is a, it's more of a statement game for Cleveland than for anybody. You know, they're going to go in the Golden State and get the win. Uh, and and if, it's, if it's no other reason, like only like plus three. You know what I mean? Like who who who's Golden State to only be minus three at home to a freaking Cleveland? You know what I mean? Like ever. And and I I think I think Cleveland's very very easy against the spread bet in this game. So uh, I I like I like Garland. Um, I uh, but I think Cleveland's going to take this game so seriously that like no one's going to like do anything any stupid shit. You know what I mean? I don't think anybody's going to shoot more than they have to. I think they're going to put in a really good team game together. Maybe that's going to hurt fantasy a little bit. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's my opinion. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is a really interesting game um, in a lot of ways. I, I don't know that I necessarily agree because I, it's hard for me to see golden state just continuing to lose. And I think you're going to see extra run. So from a fantasy perspective, I will, I, I will prioritize um, one of, one of clay, 
I'm sorry, one of Curry or Clay. I, I, I'm going to the, the way Curry. Curry, by the way, all throughout last every year, everything from last year, they've needed him this year. So you know what he's done? He's averaging fifty. What is he averaging? Fifty six fantasy points a game. Yeah, I mean he's ten three, and he has a ceiling. And if you like this game, you want to run either Mitchell or Garland on one side and Curry on the other side. I have no problem with that. Um, I, I still have Jaw rated better, but I don't know if I should. Uh, Curry's been just unbelievable. I, I think one of these guys gets hot tonight. And, and I think that everybody is sort of, sort of in play. Um, it's not a great matchup in general to play Cleveland, but they should be able to, you know, being at home, you should see Golden State be able to control pace. Um, I'm not going to play Draymond. I'm not going to probably play Wiggins, but I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, if you want to, you want to go a little narrative, they, this is the team that gave up on him. Uh, you know, it's a long time ago, so who cares? But uh, anyway, Garland or Mitchell, and then I have Curry or Clay. And I think both of those are, are, are really all of those. All of that's really good. One of Garland or Mitchell seems to go off every game. So that's that's sort of what I'm treating as my priority. And 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 this could be a this could be a good Mobley game at his price. Um, I just don't think that it's in general, it's not the most fun fantasy play, even though he's just a really, really good basketball so much so that it, I think it actually almost hurts him from a fantasy standpoint because he's he just wants to do the right thing, set the right screen. He gets a lot of hockey assists. Um, anyway, that that's just my take on 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 Mobley, but uh, the one guy who, who we should probably throw into the mix, just because, you know, basically every other game he puts up like eight X and that's Kevin love. He can do it in short spurts. Uh, I have no problem with throwing in a, a little bit of Kevin love, but I think Garland or Mitchell and Cl- Clay or, or Steph on the other side is a, uh, is certainly interesting. And I, and for what it's worth, I prefer Garland and Clay um, because of the savings. All right, so we have no uh, no LeBron for the Lakers, and I'm just going to take a quick look right here at the ownership projection because um, am I missing – I don't know what's going on. This is a terrible projection on Westbrook, in my opinion. Uh, I think that Westbrook – is uh one of the haven't you learned not to not to not to question the projections haven't you learned that that <laughs> your takes don't mean anything compared to the projections haven't you learned that from last night but okay go ahead let's hear it um we also don't know about lonnie walker uh who i think is also interesting for this game and anthony davis i like all three of those guys not together necessarily but uh and then and then you get the weird potential for the for the for the wenyan gabriel start and at 3300 that could be interesting um, it's not the most fun play in the world. I probably will skip it, but I can use him as a placeholder because the game starts so much later than everything else. Um, but I like the idea of, of Westbrook with, uh, you know, you do have Pat Bev still there, but I, I think Westbrook's still going to get an uptick. And I mean, he's going to see more minutes with, with that, with, uh, LeBron out for what it's worth Westbrook, since he's been on the bench, uh, he's 50, 51% from the floor. Uh, I think 40, no, almost 50% from three. Um, and uh, people sort of haven't really noticed. So assuming this game stays close, which I think it could, this could be a, and it's, this, you know, should be a played at a pretty quick pace with, with Sacramento. Um, so I, I think you want some pieces here. And then I have no problem with, uh, with Fox or Sabonis on the other side. I think they're both in good spots. Uh, Malik Monk is going to be the projection darling, but I personally think that that's one you could take or leave. I don't think if he's going to be high owned, I want him. If he's not going to be high owned, I'll definitely take shots on it. And that's where I'm at. Yeah. This is my, I think my favorite game. Um, uh, my, my top play overall on the slate, uh, aside from Moran, obviously is, is, is Sabonis at 8,500. Um, and as a result, I, and I, listen, I, I, I am not fading Monk going back to the Lakers. Uh, I, I am, I'm playing that. Uh, I am totally playing that. I think this, I think this game is going to go, it's going to be very high scoring. I, I love Davis AD in this spot. I love Westbrook. If you, if you give me the go ahead to play Westbrook. I think I want to play one of those two in literally every lineup <laughs> um, between Davis and Westbrook. I'll play Monk. I'll play Sabonis. It, you're going to have to like stop me from playing all three of them, including Fox. Um, I just, I just have to listen. I've seen the Lakers play a little bit. Sometimes they just don't play any defense. Um, and, 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 and I think this game could, could, could go bananas. I think Davis, he's going to get 38 minutes in a, in a close game, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and between him and Westbrook, I think, I think that they're going to do really, really well. And I'm going to be watching a little basketball maybe, uh, at, uh, yeah. at, uh, at mid at midnight, you know, starting up the second half, you know, so I'm, I'm very much interested in playing this game. 
Yeah, uh, I, I, I like this game uh, as well. Um, and I, I just think like you could, I could really go through everybody and say who I, I, it'd be easier to say who I don't like. And that's almost like, I guess I don't want to play Keegan Murray, but I'm open to, to, you know, look, you get Harrison Barnes coming off a big game. Um, he's 4,900. There's definitely potential for him there at that price in this matchup. Uh, you've got De'Aaron Fox. I'm not sure why Sabonis is projecting so much better than Fox, uh, but I do like, I had Sabonis as a better play than Fox, but I think they're both right there. And if they're going to, the ownership's going to go to Sabonis, I'm happy to play Fox. Um, so I have one of Sabonis or Fox as a priority. I have Westbrook and AD as priorities. And again, I know I'm saying a lot of priorities today. Usually I've, I've only been able to end up with like three or four the last couple of days we've done this. And I've got like a whole bunch today. So I'm going to just have to try and and figure it out and do some 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 multi-entry. But I, I agree with you. This is a, a game I definitely want a lot of pieces of. And uh, I have no idea why the Westbrook projection is so low. Because uh, without LeBron, you're, you need creators. Um, if you're not playing Westbrook, I, I would encourage to get a little bit of Lonnie Walker in there. Um, does he, does he start Westbrook or no? No, you know, they're bringing him off the bench. But it doesn't really, I mean, it's, it's actually. Then, no, he's still going to get 30 plus minutes. I'm just, just saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I would imagine he, he's in the thirties and even if he's in the low thirties, like without LeBron, this, this could be a triple double time in this kind of a matchup for him. So uh, basically my, my favorites on the slate. I like the one of Kate or Ivy. I like the Toronto. I want to play at least one Toronto guy, one of their main four or one of their bigs. I think that if I, if I don't play their main four, I'll play, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Boucher as my, as my, my only guy I would, I would keep without them SGA and Giddy or Giddy, um, two of Milwaukee jaw Garland or Mitchell clay or Curry Westbrook AD Sabonis or Fox and then white or smart. So I have a lot of priorities. I'm going to have to narrow it down. I'll get my core plays up a little bit later. And, uh, that's where well, I'm at. Right well, for me, uh, the, the, my favorite play is, is, is jaw, right? Um, yeah. As far as far as games go, I could really do without the Denver game. I could do without the Phoenix game. I could do without the Knicks game. I could do without. I mean, Shea, I guess, is a good play. But what am I going to do yeah, for Toronto? Games? Somebody from at least two of those guys go off every game. Yeah. You know what you could do? You could do a Van Vliet Shea thing. Yeah, That'd I be. like that. Um, the Milwaukee thing bothers me only because, again, it's it's kind of playing roulette sort of with some of the plays. Um, you know, obviously Portis is locked in, you know what I mean? But, but, uh, but uh, you're playing real with some of the plays. And I'm not so sure about a San Antonio run back. Uh, I'm just going to want to, and I, I've already given you my thoughts on the Cleveland Golden State game. I think it, I think that's game is going to be, I think Cleveland's going to win. I think it's going to be low scoring actually. Yeah. Um, I think the total seems a little too high to me. Yeah. And, and uh, I, uh, and, and I, I really like the, uh, I haven't, I haven't watched, I've watched a total maybe, 12 minutes of Laker basketball this year. Mm -hmm. And it was like the, the middle quarters of like the Utah game where, where no one stopped anybody for like 15 straight minutes. And, and oddly they had been one of the best defensive rated teams in the NBA before yeah. that. Now they're sort of falling down. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to keep playing defense when you're losing, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. It's rough. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be into the Laker game as my main play and I'm going to be, uh, and I'll, I might, I might take, I might take a shot at the Cavaliers in the, in the, in the sports betting space. Oh, okay. All right. I like it. Yeah. You just, go, you just do the money line. You get it like, I think it was like plus 180, I think, or something like that. One yes. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, I will be live at six. I mean, I guess, cause it's Friday sheets that you will not be here. You'll be at Madison. No, 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 I, I think I, I think I will. I think I'll be okay. Oh, I thought you were going to go to the game or something. The, no, I have no game today. Oh, uh, my tomorrow, bad. I I, 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 I'm going to MMA tomorrow. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. I got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I will be out tomorrow for what it's worth because I, I have my kid stuff and then, and, but, and, and, and I will be, I will also, I will be around Sunday for, for, for live for the, uh, Pace Keenum slate. Um, <laughs> yeah, I Good. suppose. I don't know. Good. Um, yeah. and I'll be posing, there's no more NASCAR for the rest of the year, no more tennis for the rest of the year. Um, and that's pretty much it. Oh, st stick around after, after. Stop yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to just tell you the same thing. Okay. All right. Good luck to everyone tonight. I'll see you guys at six.